Okay, if there's one thing growers can use continually improvement and experience with, it's diagnosing plant problems. It's a very important skill, and I encourage everyone to continue to work on it. Uh, it's never really perfect. It's always different. You're never sure exactly what the answer may be in some cases, but it's something you still should still continue to work on. And that diagnosis thing, going through the process we go through here, I'm going to do a couple of examples. Uh, applies and gets you at least to get you an idea what you may have. So you can start developing a plan around it. You just want to say, oh, the plant died and move on. You want to try to determine what caused that plant to die so you can better plan for the future. So if you're trying to diagnose a problem or um, trying to help someone else diagnose a problem, first thing you to do is you're trying to get a correct diagnosis. That's your goal. You don't want to make assumptions because if you're just if you're trying to get that to the root of that problem or the real um, basic cause to that, try not to make assumptions. The key is to continually ask questions of yourself or a person you're trying to help. That continual questions because someone may see four and someone may see three. So I don't want to make any quick assumptions. You want to kind of look at the situation and just collect some facts and some data before you start going through and saying, oh, that is X, Y, or Z. The key part is you want to try to classify the problem. I want to talk about each of these in detail. Whether it's a, a fungi that caused the problem, a bacteria, a virus, water, an animal, the, your, um, yourself, the grower, um, the environment, uh, classifying the problem can really do a lot for as far as helping you prevent that issue or correcting that issue moving forward. So starting with fungi. It's very common, uh, controlled by fungicides. So oddly enough, fungicides control fungi. Uh, they tend to th thrive in warm, moist in environmental conditions. So typically, uh, your mildews, you know, your powdery mildews is a good example of a fungi that you may see very commonly occur. And that's likes those kind of warm, moist conditions, those heavy rains, those heavy dews, and warm temperatures cause these to really get growing quite good. Bacteria is another one. They tend to favor warm weather to the point of hot weather. They can multiply faster as the temperature rises. So if the problem becomes increasingly um, an issue as the temperature gets warmer and warmer, as this season warms up, could be a bacterial disease. Fungicides, remember, don't work on bacteria. Fungi and bacteria are different. You need a bactericide to combat bacteria. So if you apply a fungicide and it doesn't really work, it may not be because the fungicide is broken, it may not be because you don't have a fungus to begin with. Uh, so that's another indication. Viruses. These are typically insect vectored. Uh, plants lack an immune system, so you, you cannot control the actual substance. You can't control the actual virus. You need to prevent the vector from bringing that virus in. So insect control and clean equipment are very important. This is tobacco mosaic virus. It's got a very unique look to it. it might be a little bit more of a common cold virus you might be used to seeing, uh, but viruses are very tough because plants lack the immune system, so uh, we want to prevent the virus from even coming into our fields. Nutrient imbalance. So this can be pH related and or an over or under application of fertilizer. Uh, under application means their plants are starving for a particular nutrient. Over application means you could be blocking certain nutrients. Typically, it's a field or crop wide problem. Uh, pH concerns uh, tend to show up early in the season if it's kind of nutrient imbalances related to the pH problem. And nutrients tend to show up more at fruit set. Again, not always the case, but just indications that you may have this nutrient uh, problem going on. Here we see a citrus crop uh, having some nutrient imbalance. Here's a corn plant, corn plants. Now I said it's kind of field or crop wide. In this case, that's not um, true. We see these corn uh, plants in the back doing quite well. The corn here kind of having that yellowing um, appearance there. So again, not always true, but when we see this one doing well, one not doing well, probably not disease oriented at least, probably nutrient oriented. Or it could be water. This is another issue. Too much or too little, same thing. Too much water could be over irrigation, could be a leaky hose, could be just excessive rain, or it could be too little. You want to know how the water flows through your field. The example here, you could see probably where the water kind of collects and certain plant species can help indicate where it could be wetter soil and where that's going to travel. You can't expect good yields here. You might as well make a walking path or split two fields in this area. You want to check your irrigation line for leaks or clogs because that can lead to too much or too little water. Insects, kind of a neat, neat image right here. Uh, they're variable. Each one's got their own little special properties, but each has its main time frame that they show up. A good 
idea of when to expect them. Degree days can help predict this. Uh, very important for some insects, if you're looking at monitoring and developing control measures, degree days can help you predict and time your applications and your scouting accordingly. Animals. They can be really small like nematodes, which I think often get overlooked, to very large, such as deer or even in some case bear. Uh, so you want to determine what animal is likely to be in your area. Whether it's deer, deer fence, you could use um, electric fence for small animals like chipmunks and squirrels. Uh, and nematodes a little bit harder and you want to work on controlling them potentially in the soil if you can. Environmental, it's kind of hard to plan for this. Uh, some of it might be obvious, hail damage, temperature extremes can cause cracking, in this case a tree trunk, or wind damage. Um, tropical storms or hurricanes, um, these are just things maybe you can't control, but at least can identify. Uh, hail is an interesting one if it's a distant field where you don't get to see every day. Um, you're not going to see the hail or it could not hail the home but at the field it could. So just things to consider, and not say, oh, hail's kind of obvious once you see it. Well, some fields are distant. And the last one is grower error. This can be the hardest to see or realize or admit to, uh, that you messed up here, or it looks like a grower may have applied an herbicide where they shouldn't have. Uh, so just be realistic. Uh, if it was you find growers, rightfully so, don't want to admit to something that they may have done. Uh, but by looking at the data and collecting it, it's the key part is just to realize what you did and don't do that again.